Welcome to our Wagner Lab Cafe online. And thanks a lot for joining us. My name is Alexander Biller, and I'm looking forward to share a lot of inspiration with you. Our topic today, Lean Labs, improve your lab productivity in order to realize the full potential of lean in the laboratory, a laboratory can act on several levels. This include, for example, optimizing laboratory workflows and processes, reducing walking, improving material storage and organization and reducing waiting times. By applying lean techniques, a laboratory can increase productivity by 30 up to 60%. In addition, lean techniques can be used to eliminate staff capacity, bottlenecks and reduce turnaround times and laboratory errors. Together, we will look behind the scenes and learn more about what this looks like in practice. And we have fantastic speaker around today to look to this topic from different perspectives. Impulse number one is about what are the possibilities to improve lab with lean management tools with Dr. Wolf Christian Gerstner, his founder and CEO of Genu. He has worked for more than 15 years to optimize and design laboratories across different life science industries. He's the lean expert, probably the most recognized expert worldwide to optimize more and he optimized more than 150 lab processes and lab layouts. Christian, it's a pleasure that you're on board. Impulse number two is focusing on the question, how can we integrate the new possibilities in lab running operations? Um, with Stefan Jäger, he's head of lab operations, Hameln at GBA Group Food. He made his uh, apprenticeship as chemical laboratory technician at, at uh, Lufa Hameln from 1990 to 2001. He was employee of Acrolab, among others as quality assurance representative since 2001, employee of GBA Hameln since 2015, laboratory manager, and since 2021, project manager, lean in the laboratory. Impulse number three is about why should we rethink our processes and space continuously? Normally with Dr. Nadja Henke, she's ill today. She's very sorry, but Christian uh, Gerstner will take her part. So thanks a lot, Christian. And um, at the end, we have a Q&A session. So if you have questions, please write it in the chat and we can answer them. Um, then I would say, um, yeah, let's, let's start. Let's learn more from the lean professionals. Take a good cup of coffee and be inspired. Christian, it's your turn. Yeah, thank you, Alexander, for the opportunity to talk about this uh, exciting topic about uh, lean in laboratories um yeah let's get started uh, right away with uh, with the first with the first topic uh, which as i said is about the possibilities to improve laboratories with lean management tools and if we talk about the possibilities i mean first we should start with what is lean and what is the contribution of lean and um at the end i mean lean is all about the customer service that can be an internal customer um, if you are in a laboratory at a production site, for example, uh, uh, for example, the supply chain department could be an internal customer or the external customer if it's a contract lab, for example. Um, that's basically um, uh, the focus of Lean. And if we think about the customer, um, the customer evaluates um, yeah, the service he's getting in three dimensions. On the one hand, what is the quality? Um, so how robust your your analysis are it's uh, yeah assessing also your services in terms of uh, how much it costs so behind that are how many inefficiencies are uh, in your lab operations and also yeah in which cycle time you can deliver uh, the analytical results and in the end the contribution is uh, of lean is uh, can be on all these three dimensions it can be to improve quality to reduce costs and to also reduce cycle times. And the approach of basically all lean techniques and tools at the core is really 
that yeah that it's about deploying your most valuable resources uh, from your lab as your employees your equipment um, uh, in the best possible way that's basically what uh, what lean is is all about and if you have keep this in mind uh, yeah you can ask yourself okay is this lean management now just something which uh, just got invented in the last uh, last years or is this actually something which is a more um, more robust uh, set of uh, techniques um, if we look at that question um, yeah we, we see that lean management basically is quite quite uh, established um, in the set of techniques uh, it evolved over the last 70 years as many of you know it started with toyota in the 50s then there was uh, in 1991 a famous MIT study about um, about lean at Toyota, which basically gave the term lean to what Toyota did there. And then basically 10 years later, it all started in labs. Uh, so the first uh, lean lab project, uh, which got officially known, was in 2001 in Florida in the United States. Um, and from that onwards, during the past uh, 20 years, um, yeah, it spread uh, around the world. Uh, and now, nowadays, you can see lean lab projects really in different geographies uh, from, uh, from South Africa to Namibia to Saudi Arabia, Japan, China, everywhere, basically, there are lean projects uh, in laboratories. It, uh, it can be uh, yeah, recognized uh, now as really as the standard to optimize laboratories. And if you have limited time to improve something, it's always good to yeah to use these uh, techniques because uh, because it's uh, yeah because it helps you to to achieve your your objectives in the in the fastest way because yeah it's an established set of techniques. Um, and. What we did is uh, because I mean basically Lean Lab is now twenty years old. We looked uh, we looked back at what are the possibilities and what has been the possibilities uh, of um, of laboratories to uh, to apply Lean. And we did a we did a um, quite a, an extensive study um, on the impact of Lean Lab uh, in laboratories. Um, and there we looked at basically all uh, all projects which have been. Uh, which have been um, yeah, published and analyzed them basically. And we, we uh, put together all the insights from, from that research in a small article. So, so for those of you who are interested uh, even more in this topic and beyond uh, this uh, very short, short impulse I give today, uh, just uh, write, write a message and then you can also have a look at, the, at the, full, the full study there where I will provide you now in the following a couple of, um, a couple of examples around the yeah, the opportunities which are in, in lean laboratories. So one key thing was really to, to look at what can you achieve with lean uh, in laboratories. Um, and what we uh, first looked at is, I mean, if you want to achieve something uh, and to, to co compare the projects which have been performed, is that you first look at what actually has been the objectives and the benefits during these projects. And there are basically different combinations there of what these projects aimed for. What we see here is that, um, that along the dimensions of cycle time, cost, and quality, the, the projects followed a little bit a different path. Around 58% of the projects just focused mainly on one objective, either cycle times, or reducing costs or improving quality. There's like 58%, so nearly uh, two thirds. Another set of, uh, of uh, projects focused on, uh, on two objectives. So either cycle time and cost or cost and quality and so forth. And that's another approximately third. And then there are only like 9%, so only a few numbers who basically focused on all three at the same time. And that's... Uh, that's one uh, uh, interesting thing to see, actually, um, because as many of you know, that uh, these three dimensions of cycle times, cost, and quality are basically combined in, in a so-called magic triangle, which basically means that you cannot achieve the maximum of the benefits on all these three dimensions. <laughs> and you always have to look, where do you want to focus? And this gives an, a, a good example of what actually companies have been have been uh, aiming for. 
So that's one part. If we then think about, okay, how much improvement did they gain um, uh, from, uh, from these projects? We also analyzed, analyzed that uh, um, across more than 100 projects. Uh, which have been publicly um, available. And here what we found is that all labs reported significant uh, impact when applying lean in their laboratories on, all the, on, on, on several of these dimensions. Speed, they uh, improved on average uh, 40% uh, productivity in terms of test output increase around 60%, walkway reduction around 50%, and quality around 60%. You also see that there's quite a bit of variation. Um, so there's also the top quarter, the bottom, bottom quarter, what you see. So there's quite a range. Some are even better. Some are um, not as good as the average, for sure. Um, but in overall, all these projects achieved quite some, uh, some positive results when, uh, when applying lean in their, in their projects. And that, that's what they have measured. And that's actually also what we see in our projects, what we are doing that if you do it properly, you can achieve um, you can achieve quite a lot. Um, um, that's what we also see. But uh, with data, you always have to be a little bit careful. There are likely also projects which have not been reported, and those are maybe not as successful. So that's also what uh, everybody has to look at. Uh, or consider that those uh, projects who got reported are likely those who are successful. So there might be also others um, who didn't gain as much as they wanted, but they didn't basically publish. That can happen. So the key takeaway of that is if you do or want to do lean, there is a lot of impact there, what you can achieve, but you have to do it basically right. And uh, if you then think about what, where actually and, and uh, where to, uh, apply lean techniques, there are different areas you can apply lean towards. And here is basically yeah, a typology of what you can do with lean. First, I mean, you have to decide on the improvement direction. Do you want to go for one, two, or three of, of these directions, like efficient inefficiencies to reduce them or to reduce costs or even more of them? You can also apply lean to existing laboratories. Um, or you can also apply lean when you are designing a new laboratory. So if you're constructing a new laboratory or refurbishing it, you can also apply several lean techniques, um, which is then called uh, lab, lean lab design. On the improvement lever, there's also different directions you can take. On the one hand, you can uh, focus on productivity. But on the other hand, you can also think about uh, optimizing the general workload. So basically, if you are, um, talk about the topic of reduced testing, so what tests you should really do to have your processes under control. And, um, and you can also think about the optimal test campaign sizes, which is influencing he quite heavily the general workload. So these are different options on, uh, on this dimension. And then you can also think about which parts of your value stream in your laboratory you want to apply lean to. The most common one is for sure the operational lab activities, but you can also apply it to support processes and also actually to the to lab leadership activities. So basically applying it on your own activities, uh, which is then called lean leadership. The most common ones you have, many people have in mind are those which are highlighted here now in gray, so, uh, gray, so that you're focusing on efficiencies or cycle time, as I've shown previously uh, from our study. And this is applied to existing laboratories with a focus of productivity for the operational lab activities. This is the most common one, which uh, is typically at least at the start, but it's frequently also applied for, uh, for all the other um, things I've showed here. So for example, for new, uh, new labs, when you're designing them, where we will hear also in the in the last impulse a little bit more about that. And if you do that, uh, if you want to apply um, lean here, um, then you can um, have, uh, or you should have in mind, uh, yeah, several lean techniques which are out there. And for the lean techniques, yeah, there are quite, quite a few uh, out there. In total, there are more than 50 lean techniques and principles uh, which are all um, relevant, but, the key thing here is that not all are actually or have to be applied in each occasion. 
So for example, if you are focusing or if you have an, if you want to start a lean project with a focus on productivity, you have to select a, a specific type of techniques which are relevant for solving these kinds of problems. So for example, that you look at the value stream, that you look uh, at waste in, in your processes. These are, for example, tools which you need to select then. If you, on the other hand, focus more on cycle times, you have to choose a different set of te techniques. And if you focus on, um, <coughs> on, on quality, there is also a set of specific techniques like fishbone diagrams um, and uh, other techniques like five wires. So this is uh, quite important to, uh, to consider that there are different techniques because um, yeah, many people actually don't select the right, uh, right techniques for their, the problems they are facing. And then, of course, I mean, if you select the wrong tool, you will not have the outcome what you what you intend for. For those who are interested to read a little bit more about uh, some of these uh, techniques, you can also look at uh, our Lean Lab lexicon, which we have uh, on our website. There, we have a little bit more to get familiar um, uh, for that. But as I mentioned, uh, um, yes, there are many techniques out there which help you to achieve your goals in the most fastest way. Because for example, one tool like uh, the value stream mapping is an established tool. So um, if you want to analyze your lab on an overall level, this is quite, um, quite a good way to get insights in the fast way. So whenever you have limited time to achieve something, it's good to actually, uh, yeah, uh, to, to use these techniques to, yeah, to, to get the most impact and to also use your time in the most valuable way. And to use your time in the most valuable way, there are actually four things I would like to also mention to really achieve a, a, a good impact in your lab. Because from our, um, from our experience, there are quite, uh, quite a couple of mistakes uh, which, uh, which um, yeah, people are doing when they are applying lean in the laboratories. And I would like to mention four of them. The first one is that some consider or see lean just as a set of tools so that they basically say, okay, I've got this problem, I take this tool and that's basically lean. But lean is even more. It's really a management technique and it's really a thinking how you approach to improve your laboratory. So it's, it's quite a bit more than just a set of tools. That's the first thing. The second thing is that if you start lean, that you are first or one of the first things you are doing is that you are starting with 5S. Many people suggest this as uh, something you could do because 5S, which is a technique with five quite simple steps. It looks uh, overall also quite easy to learn, but um, if you think, uh, or if you get more familiar with it, you will see that actually there's quite a bit of change involved uh, when applying these techniques. And it's also not, not uh, um, recommended to do it as a first thing, because one of the S's in 5S is actually to standardize and when you actually do this, do standardization or to develop standards as one of the first things, you basically, um, you basically, yeah, fix uh, a lab, your lab processes and your layout in a way which is not yet optimized. So, should our recommendation is to not, or there are only a few occasions where 5S is recommended to do first. The third thing I would like to mention is that. Yeah, some just see lean as, as a project and frequently as a short project, and then it's basically done. But that's actually also not what, what should be, uh, uh, what lean should be considered as. Yes, you started typically with a, with, with a project, but then what you learn, you should really apply on a continuous basis. Several tools you can use on an ongoing basis, for example, like non-value add analysis, you can do, uh, do and you should do over time to see uh, what you improved, if your, uh, if your measures uh, are effective or not. So yes, it should be not just one project and then it's over. And the fourth thing and the last thing is that uh, you think, okay, I want to start lean. I send one employee to a training and that's sufficient. That's also what we frequently see because 
uh, when people are coming to our trainings, then they, they, there's sometimes of, a, of larger, even larger labs where there's one person who gets assigned to, to, start, to start lean. And that's basically not how it works because um, you have to get a, a certain number of people involved to really have an impact and that it's not just one person uh, overall who can turn, uh, uh, turn or who can realize the impact of lean uh, on, a, on a larger scale. That's the fourth thing I would like to, to, uh, yeah, to give you as a last impulse here, that you should consider these four things and an alarm bell should ring when, uh, when you start your project uh, in this way. Yeah, and with these last four things, uh, I would like to end my first impulse and uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions related to this. Okay, thanks a lot, Christian, for this uh, great overview. I have a direct question to you. You spoke about the magic triangular um, cycle time, costs, quality. What do you say to a customer which want to improve everything in the same time with the same people with the same tool? Um, I mean, first of all, you can make improvements on all dimensions at the same time so you can achieve something at the same time but you cannot achieve at the same time the maximum <laughs> the maximum on all dimensions and why can't you do this is because you have limited time and uh, with your time you can focus only on a few of these things to realize it because to achieve an impact takes time. And if your time is limited, you cannot achieve the maximum on all three dimensions. So you have, you, have to, you have to either reduce your ambitions on all these dimensions, or you have to focus on one or two of them. And that's basically what I would recommend uh, to focus on some of them initially, because lean is more like a journey. So initially, I mean, you can also for the first one or two years, you can focus on one or two dimensions and lay, then later on, on another dimension and put a more heavy emphasis on that. So that's what I would recommend. Th thanks a lot. Then I would directly hand over to you, Stefan. Yeah, thank you, Alexander, for this opportunity to introduce myself and my project. I hope I could, could give you some uh, new impressions and overview about what we do in, uh, together with Christian in our company. I would like to start my presentation. Yes, I would li like to give you a small overview about how you can integrate uh, new possibilities from Lean Lab in your op in, in your uh, lab operations, and I sh would like to show you the way how we do this in our company. When we start with the Lean Lab project in our company, we had a few questions. In, in this slide, I have summarized the most important questions that need to be clarified before starting the Lean Lab project in in this. Main questions are uh, how to start the Lean project in my company. It was important to identify what to do the staff and the employer need for the project. This means basically time and also resources. The next two questions are for me the main key for the success of this uh, the, of our project. First question was how to reduce the fears and the reservations. Problem is that the the question uh, is uh, that we have to reduce it because there is a lot of misinformation and rumors about lean. Employees often associate the topic of lean with the loss of their job and the loss of personal freedom and flexibility. This can lead to rejection to the project. In the end, there is a, there's a border and a barrier. You can't uh, walk through when, the employer, uh, when your employees are not interested and they don't understand for what and how you do this. So I came to the next question, how to explain motivation and goals from the employer. The motivation in the employer should be explained before starting. The client must transparently explain what goals he wants to achieve with this project. The Lab is primarily about increasing the effectiveness and the skilled workers, workforce in the order uh, to compensate for the existing shortage of skilled workers. In the moment we have big problems, 
or very uh, very big problems to find new employees, especially good educated employees. So we have to reduce the non-skilled works from our educated employees, so they have more quality time to do to, and to, uh, to process more quality work for us. Next question is how to motivate the team for the lean for lean lab. The motivation of the employer should be explained before standing. Uh, the project begins. It should be clearly demonstrated to the team what personal benefits each individual in the lab will gain as a result. The primary aim is to make it easier for the employees to work. If this has been clearly presented, the team motivation is to be expected. I think this is a self, self going. How can I improve the stuff? Uh, how can I involve the stuff and what are the needs for them? I think it is important to fully involve the team in order to optimize their own workplaces. Sufficient time and resources must be available to Im implement the findings. In the end, if your employees uh, see uh, new ways and they, op they are open-minded and found solutions for problems, they also should be able and they need uh, the resources to fix this. To empower staff to recognize potential for improvement is an ongoing process, like learning by doing on the fly during the project. And in the end, the staff and also the client need to understand. And I think this is also the, what, what Christian uh, told before, lean is, is, a, is a never ending procedure. What, po what points to consider when starting a lean project? The right timing is important. The staff need to have required time and capacity available. A lean project can, cannot be carried out exclusively alongside the actual work. I think this is also what uh, Christian told before. You need time for the analyz analyzation, for the design, and also for the implementation. And it's senseless to start with a project if you know before that your employees are not, uh, that they, when they not have the time to, to fix this. I think a key for, for, the, for uh, the success is uh, the, that you have a very good communication and it's important to have an open communication from the beginning, which conveys that identified waste will not lead to any disadvantages for the for the employees uh, afterwards. And it's not about punishing omissions, omissions of stuff. The project is meant to facilitate and support stuff. The employees need to understand they do all this work for more for their, themselves than for the company. In the end, they, the benefit for the employees is much bigger like the, uh, the benefit for the company. Okay. Benefit for the company is the result of uh, saving time or maybe uh, increase uh, the, the quality. The management should accompany the project and provide the necessary resources for the implementation. Partial results should, uh, of the project should be regularly mo monitored to underline management interests. I think it's also uh, very important that the employees could, could see in, in the running project that the management is by their side and that, that the management is interested and uh, give also support. A strong team representing all areas of the, of the project must be, uh, must be formed because uh, you need employees from every, from every uh, pro process to, to uh, involve the, the single processes. How could you involve your employees? It must be determined what number of staff is appropriated. It must be also determined in which function each staff member will be used. There's, uh, there are the tasks of analysis, design, implementation, intro and introduction. Not all staff needed by involved in all steps. In all steps. And in the end, it must be clear what is the role dis distribution of the team members. So the easiest and maybe the best is if you in, could involve all your employees, but normally this is not possible because somebody have to, someone have to do the work. So you need to find out 
which, uh, which persons of, or which people of your team are uh, the best represent, representer of the, the departments and this uh, you have to find out and uh, to fix it in a team. In the end, you need also give the different roles to the uh, team members. There could be just one team leader and uh, normally you need also an external expert. How to motivate the staff? I think learning new skills and knowledge increases personal development. So every new impression and every new technique your employees could learn, it's a benefit for themselves. Secondary also for, for the company, but first they increase their self uh, and they, they raise up their own possibilities. The employees can design their own processes and workplaces and thus achieve a facilitation and simplification and an increase in their own effectiveness in the future. I think this is also a benefit if the employees understand that they are uh, that it's possible to uh, to design their own workplaces and uh, also protect um, no, uh, and also support their own uh, their own processes. This leads to less stress and less work with the same or maybe better results. Next question is how can the staff be trained uh, specifically, specifically uh, and especially uh, how could you um, um, employ, how could you empower your employers to, for learning to see? I think the employees must be trained in specific, specific lab, lean lab techniques. The training should be related to their own activities and workplaces and should be applied in the ongoing process. The project should not be a pure project of an external consultant who only imparts theoretical knowledge in lengthy and boring training sessions. This leads normally not to the, re to the results that you are expecting. So normally it's an it's a opportunity to have an external expert who is coming in your laboratory to have a complete overview and after you could, he could uh, explain how we could do the, our job better in this moment and maybe also for the future. But in, when you start with new analysis or you have new uh, employees or maybe new, new buildings, you again need an external expert. So I think it's easier to, to uh, to give the, the, um, the knowledge to your, to your employees in, in future, they are able to create Lean Lab in, for, this, for themselves. How to implement changes and maintain, and maintain this uh, sustained momentum? I think this is the biggest uh, question and also uh, key to the success. It is important to implement changes step by step and involve stuff in the processes. An understandable explanation for the changes facilitates understanding and acceptance. You also keep your employees at your side. I think it's, uh, it's a very bad idea. It's the same like uh, with quality uh, management. You can't do this upside down. You need to do this down, from down to the bottom, uh, to, to the top. And in the end, the success achieved usually motivates staff to make further improvements and implement them. An additional regular Gamba walk helped to stay open-minded to the staff and also to the client. As a result of the procedure, we uh, process a regular Gamba walk in our company. Um, we do this uh, every three months and have a look in our laboratory and we have a, we analyze the, the uh, procedures that we have, and we are looking for new ways. In the next slides, I would like to show some examples for over-processing that we identified in our laboratory. We had a big problem with uh, rework, like uh, additional transport of uh, materials and, and also transport of samples. We had a big problem with, uh, with double notifications. Um, 
first we do this uh, in paper and after we give, we uh, have a notification uh, we, we have gives uh, an, the data in our uh, IT system yeah we had the uh, analyzation we, we proceed a uh, non-value add analysis and these are the is, is the result of it Next problem that we identified was that our uh, workstations are not in the best condition. The organization was no, not always the best uh, for the handling of the samples and uh, for the handling of the analysis. So we uh, ha had a look and redesigned a lot, especially after we, we made the spaghetti analysis for one of our departments. We've been a little shocked after we doing this. And uh, as a result of this, we, we, we um, decided to uh, reorganize and rebuild this department. And this is what we do in, in the next steps. So I hope I could, you, I could give you a little un, uh, overview and I'm, I'm hopefully waiting for your questions. Thanks a lot, Stefan, for your internal view um, to lean techniques and uh, then i have a first question to you um what mistakes did you do in the first project and or which lessons learned do you have is there something um you say oh in the first project this was not so good but we optimized that immediately and uh, this was the most important lessons learned yeah, the, the biggest success of our process uh, was that we have a trainer like Christian from the beginning. And so the number of mistakes we made was very small. Um, lean is a, is a never ending and a un, no, normally unstoppable and uh, process and it's ongoing. It's still ongoing. And the results that we, uh, that we, um, that we uh, that we built and that we found out are always the ne the the, uh, the basics for the next step, and I think especially it's uh, the best and uh, the it's nearly the guarantee for success is that you have very good educated uh, employees, especially for for lean techniques. Okay, thanks a lot. Then I would say I directly hand over to the third impulse. Back to you, Christian. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Stefan, for this impression. I think you talked about the right timing in your presentation. Uh, and I think what is also helpful to, to consider this as not the perfect timing, because there's never a perfect timing for to start, or uh, less likely a perfect timing for uh, starting lean, because everybody is always busy. And we had many occasions actually where, where people say we are actually too busy, we cannot start optimizing anything. But uh, even in those situations, uh, Lean helped them quite fast. So yes, it should be a good timing and the right timing. Uh, so there should not be tons of other projects, but um, it's rarely a perfect timing. Uh, uh, even uh, afterwards, uh, it can look like a perfect timing. Maybe this just to build on what Stefan, uh, Stefan said. But um, yeah, but then, uh, yeah, I start or I continue with the third topic, um, which is about uh, why we should rethink uh, our lab spaces continuously. And um, yeah, and to think about the lab spaces continuously, uh, I mean, rethinking it with lean techniques and why we should do this on a continuous basis. And uh, the first thing is um, if we, uh, yeah, talk about this topic is um, yeah that we think about what are actually the yeah the the triggering points for redesigning a lab and there are some obvious ones but there are maybe also some less obvious ones but I mean the obvious ones are like aging so if you have old infrastructure lab furniture I mean <clears throat> then for sure you need to think about uh, refurbishing or laboratories. There can be um, yeah, triggers like growth, so that you have more samples, more projects, more employees, more equipments, or actually the other way around, that due to some reasons you have less, less, uh, less volume in your, uh, in your laboratory, and then you also need to think about redesigning it. 
It can also be triggered by portfolio changes. So if you have new equipment methods or uh, if you have acquisitions, like you're buying a new portfolio or a new laboratory, and then, then you have to basically consolidate it to, uh, to, to define which activities are in which laboratory. So there are quite some triggers due to portfolio changes. And then there are also new needs and opportunities also, um, like um, yeah, green labs. Uh, so I mean, there are, there's quite some pressure also from a regulatory point of view to improve your laboratories. And um, there are also uh, opportunities if you are doing a lean project that you're identifying many opportunities for redesigning your laboratories in a more efficient way. And then there's also opportunities like, <laughs> um, like from everything called new work where you're designing your labs and also office uh, lab office spaces in a different way. So there are a lot of uh, possible triggering points. And when you look at the past years, I mean, the key is really that, I mean, in the past years, yeah, change has happened um, on a much larger scale. And that's why we're talking about the volatile world. And it's not just the world, uh, uh, on a global scale, which gets more volatile, but there are also a lot of um, uh, crises and changes which are directly affecting the laboratories. For example, climate change uh, is, is and will impact laboratories quite a lot. Uh, similarly, as the, uh, the energy crisis, because laboratories are, when you think about laboratories uh, as an industry overall, um, it's uh, it's the industry with uh, the highest energy consumption um, uh, worldwide. Uh, if you look at that, um, and if energy prices are increasing, it uh, has quite an uh, an impact. But there are also other uh, impacts, like from politics. Some labs are affected from the Brexit because they they had to shift their uh, entire. Um, Test portfolio, or also from uh, from the demographic shifts, shifts which are happening. So there are a lot of changes which are uh, impacting your portfolio, your growth, or also other uh, or bring other opportunities and needs to adjust your workspace. And we've seen that also in the past years that there's actually <laughs> quite quite some interesting changes uh, uh, in uh, yeah with the. Uh, relate relation to lab design, which has happened um, on a much larger scale than we've seen before in laboratories. Because when you think about laboratories in the past 10, 20, 30 years, I mean, many uh, consider laboratories as rather stable, as very similar from a point of view, how they are designed with the lab furniture. But in the past, they haven't have happened a lot of things. And we uh, have you only just a few examples? If you look at everything which happened around Corona, I mean, there have been many examples which just built uh, not just um, uh, for for self test but for PCR test very fast um, uh, uh, Corona test labs, for example, in containers at an airport or in different locations where you have to very rapidly think about how you can design this uh, in in just a few weeks. Then there are other developments like that there are laboratories for startups and they actually, um, I mean, startups typically have the, uh, the challenge of how they can grow and grow means also that you have to grow your lab space. So there are also, um, yeah, providers of uh, lab space for startups, which offer this in a modular way and actually also with a hotel like service so that you basically book everything you need from <laughs> waste removal uh, to laundry services for your lab coats and everything, um, <coughs> which <coughs> offers quite some opportunities. And then there are also other um, um, areas of laboratories, for example, in universities where you think, oh, maybe this is also more, more stable. But if you think about these kind of laboratories, they also have quite some change. And these change come from uh, quite some high fluctuations of researchers and also that if in the cases of uh, new research projects or grants, which you get, for example, from the DFG or for, from uh, European fundings like Horizon 2020, that you get funding for certain projects. And then you also have to redesign your project to basically accommodate for these kind of projects. Similarly, also for contract labs, there they also has been in the past uh, 10 to 15 years, 
quite some some change because there has been quite some consolidation and acquisitions going on. And if this is happening, <coughs> you also have to frequently rethink your laboratories in a completely different way so that you think about, I mean, which lab is conducting which tests um, and then in, which lab and which rooms, which tests are performed is also then changing. So there's been also quite some change. So the overall impression that the laboratory industry has been pretty stable in the past years, uh, I think is, uh, is pretty much changing. And here are just four examples with some uh, some examples where, where things happen quite fast in a, in a completely different way. And that's what I also would like to um, uh, point out that there are more and more uh, um, uh, changes um, happening and these changes happen uh, in uh, yeah to, to redesign your labs uh, because you need a better quality of your lab or you need more lab space, or you need a reconfiguration of your lab space. And sometimes it's um, not just one of these reasons, but many of these reasons. And this is driven by the, the uh, in particular, by the changes in the environment. And uh, if you, if you uh, not adjust uh, to these changes, what is then happening is, that you gain or that you incorporate in your processes quite some inefficiencies. And that's from our experience when we do, uh, for example, non-value add analysis, that we see that quite some part of the inefficiencies are linked to the layout in, um, of, uh, of the laboratories. And the, longer, and the longer there are no adjustments uh, in, in the lab layout, and the more the, the speed of changes, uh, then, I mean, you see quite some, uh, some big portion of, uh, of the inefficiencies in your lab processes. From our point of view, there's on average, like 15, 20% of inefficiencies linked to the layout. And um, this is, as you see, uh, increasing uh, over time. And uh, so if you don't act and you just keep everything as it is, and you're not adjusting it properly, then uh, you will definitely have uh, inefficiencies there. And so the key thing is, if you are thinking about redesigning a laboratory, you, you, should, you should think about, um, uh, definitely think about lean lab techniques because with this, you can reduce these inefficiencies, but also you can uh, address quite some inefficiencies uh, just without uh, building a new lab, but just with uh, redesigning the, the equipment uh, locations. That's also what you should do or can do. So overall, what I can only recommend, because from my point of view is uh, that, that there's quite some need for lab leaders to build capabilities to redesign their labs more frequently. So that it's not just uh, once in a decade or once in a, in a lifetime project, that, but that you see the lab redesign more as a strategic task for some very uh, for some labs in a <coughs> very fast changing environment um, it could be actually something on an annual or uh, annual basis or every second year for others maybe in a more stable it's every three to four years at least um, but if you <coughs> do it also um, then in a more holistic way and that you uh, also design your labs uh, with in a better way so that you get a better lab layout and their lean lab techniques help quite quite a lot um, to to make a better redesign uh, and if you're also considering all the interdependencies in your in your test portfolio what you should also do is that you build in flexibility and as much flexibility as you need and flexibility you can build in uh, the types of rooms, uh, how you design them, what kind of furnitures you use, and also how you build your infrastructure. And the last thing I think is important, if you redesign your, uh, your lab, you should not just think to optimize just small bits and pieces here and there, but that you make a more holistic redesign. Because when you do this, then you will get the biggest impact. <laughs> and holistic means that, yes, you have to think about how much do you actually have to reconfigure? Uh, is it more like a, a smaller degree, medium or more larger degree? So 
I mean, what you can always do without big costs is that you rethink your workspaces and your equipment locations. And from, uh, when doing that, you can uh, address also already quite some inefficiencies there. If you have to or can even go further to, to redesign a single room where, uh, where a lab is in, then you can actually address more inefficiencies, what we call typically the micro layout. So if you um, yeah, rebuild a room, including the lab furniture, if you can even go uh, beyond that. So for example, if you, if you uh, rebuild your lab um, or if you completely refurbish it and you've got a lot of degrees of freedom to remove walls, then you can also think about new room, co room concepts um, where you think about the position, size, and the function of separate laboratory rooms to, towards each other, because this is also quite important to, um, uh, to, to consider, because this is uh, frequently impacting uh, walking ways, which is uh, um, yeah, uh, a main source for inefficiencies. So that's what you sh should think about. So on which degree of lab or which degree of lab configuration do I need and which is suitable and I actually have to do um, when thinking about this, uh, this topic. And to help uh, in doing that, there are again the, uh, the lab management or the lab management techniques, um, which I've shown actually at the beginning. And here are some techniques highlighted which help you when thinking about redesigning your lab layouts. For example, that you are thinking about spaghetti analysis, which is basically the walk to, a way to analyze your walkways. Then you should definitely think about how to create flow within uh, one laboratory, but also across the different laboratory rooms. And yeah. Then there are also other things to consider, like to consider for, for sure the value stream. So what is the overall value stream currently and how can you support actually a better value stream uh, with a redesigned uh, um, room concept, for example. And then, I mean, you also can think about 5S technique as one uh, important thing, how to design workplaces in more detailed way than this helps you also to think about what kind of um, furniture you need, where you need shelves, cupboards, and so forth. That helps you definitely there. Underlying to all of that, um, and that's why here's the line in this presentation, is that for a good redesign, you definitely need to analyze your test portfolio to see what interdependencies are, are there. Um, because this is uh, not a lean technique, but a technique we uh, nearly always apply because it helps you really to design a very good, uh, very good layout. So yeah, with these uh, um, remarks, I would like to close. And um, yeah, I'm happy for, for questions uh, related to this topic, um, if you have any. Thanks a lot, Christian. And we have questions in the chat. And yeah, you, you say something about redesigning um, labs, so a lean lab design, and we as Waldner, we do the most, uh, the most labs in the world. And yeah, the, the customer are coming to us and say, okay, our, our process was ch is changed. We, we need more capacity. We have to redesign, we have to optimize. And this is a big, big topic. And for that, you need a flexible infrastructure. Uh, it's, it's the best way, a flexible infrastructure. Um, a flexible furniture system and then yeah we also work together to 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 make or to place the right products and infrastructure that you are flexible for the future i think this is very important because the periods are shorter and shorter and the the need to change is is there in the market so i look to the chat and i have a direct question to you christian this is an expert question to the expert. Um, what do you think about the Six Sigma approach in labs? Um, yeah, I mean, Six Sigma is, uh, is an overall an interesting concept. Um, as, uh, and there, the link to lean is, is quite close. I mean, many of the techniques are, are used interchangeably in, in one or the other world nowadays. Um, 
if we think about uh, what I showed in the first impulse, how important the, the topic of improving quality uh, has been for labs, it has a little bit less emphasis is placed on that. Um, because many is starting with the productivity focus and cycle time focus. So when you look at what, what people are doing is um, that they're using like uh, Six Sigma techniques uh, to improve quality um, uh, less frequently. Um, um, but from my point of view, it is very important. I think the key challenge is that um, many, many, uh, many uh, process robustness topics are actually not that transparent as it is in the production world, but they're, that they are happening on a much smaller scale. So if you have doing like a smaller mistakes in the laboratories, that's not becoming aware that much. So it's uh, less easy to capture these uh, errors and process robustness topics with statistical tools as, uh, as it is intended for with uh, Six Sigma. So yes, I think there is um, there are benefits to to, to address this um, because I mean to focus on quality improvements there's always good statistics uh, helpful at the beginning but uh, I think for laboratories to um, it's uh, to, uh, you can reach to a certain degree of optimization but um, yeah it has some limits from my point of view as well. Okay, then thanks a lot, uh, Christian. Another expert question to the expert, to you. Um, within, within three pillars, TPM, MRP, and lean manufacturing, particularly lean lab, what is the right time to start with lean before, after, or parallel with TPM and MRP? And why is it important or not to follow explained rules with, within the overall transformation program? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, first for everybody, I think. I mean, because there are some abbreviations which might not everybody might might know. I think. Um, <laughs> um, I think you mentioned TPM and MRP, right? Yeah. Right. And um, so, from my point of view, I mean, to be honest, you want to get some improvements and uh, so i i think there's no inherent logic what you should do first uh, if it's the one thing tpm if it's lean but uh, what i think what is defining what you should do first is the problem you are facing and you should think about what is your biggest problem or what are your biggest opportunities uh, and then define what are the tools and techniques you, uh, you want to use to improve them? So I wouldn't start with, uh, with a debate about TPM versus Lean or Six Sigma, whatever is um, per se the best. I would start with what do you want to achieve? And then think about, okay, what, uh, what can we, or what, what should we then apply? Okay, thanks. Now the next question goes to you, Stefan. Um, what when you start the lean project? What reaction um, did your employers had uh, at the very first beginning and after the first project? Yeah, the, the, as we know about the, the problems starting before, we build up a strong team and we give a lot of information to our team. We explained how and why we're doing this, and all my employees have the same problems. We have to do a lot of work, and we 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 are not able to find new employees in the in the moment. So they are happy that we try to improve them and uh, to help them. And uh, I think the biggest benefit is that we explain that we want to empower them. And they that, that's what this is what they understand very quickly. And uh, the, the biggest part of my employees are team lean and they are happy that we are doing this. And now all, all of my employees see the benefit for themselves. And now we are all big fans. Well, that, that's great. Lean fans in your company. Yeah. And 
did you measure this improvements or yes. did yeah. you make them visible? Well, we, we see this directly every month when we have a look in the working time and we could save, and this is an, an this is not a this is really not a fairy tale. We could save in one department every day eight hours of the quality working time for my employees. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a lot. And can you say something about the time investment? So this one point is the, the starting point. If you implement lean in your in your organization, but then it's a continuous process and how much time do you do you and your team invest in a month or can you say something about uh, that the time we need you need to spend for this is it, it depends a little bit in in, the, in your role i'm leader of the uh, of the uh, team and i also the main uh, person who who found uh, solutions and who do the rollout for the solution so my part is the biggest And normally we we have to we, we made a meeting a regular meeting once a week with my team and it's about one hour and uh, parallel to this you have to do the online lessons or we have to do the online lessons and I think this is also one or two hours every month oh no not not every month every week but this is uh, this is. Um, this is just for for the time that you uh, that you do the the um, education okay and the online sessions and the learnings can can i go on 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 a website or where, oh, where uh, can i get uh, this ask christian <laughs> so we are we are uh, we, we get the, the education from christian gerstner we are uh, we, we are working together with geniu And we are the, uh, the first department in the GBA who are starting this. And uh, we are the alpha tester and we are very, I think we are very successful. And I think in the future, a lot of my colleagues from the other department will also start the, a lean project, maybe together with Christian, maybe we have an internal specialist. Uh, we, are for, we are looking for a solution for this. I don't know, we will see. Okay. Yeah, these yeah, are, yeah, just to mention that, uh, Alexander, these are our lab-specific lean management courses we have uh, developed internally. And um, depending on, or you ask for the time, this depends on the time frame. I mean, you can spread this on, on a la longer time frame or on a very short time frame. And the shorter you t the time frame you choose, the more work per week uh, it is. But It can depend uh, depend on, or it can vary between one, two hours per week to more hours per week if you make it uh, even shorter and if you can afford that time or if you need to uh, spend this time to make improvements faster. So there's not a per se uh, time to do. There is a minimum speed. We would always uh, say you have to progress to, uh, to, to have a certain momentum. But beyond that, I mean, you can do it uh, rather on a normal or faster speed, uh, whatever is most suitable. Okay, thanks. Um, Christian, a question to you from the chat. Um, more than 45% pharma, um, MFG and allied research labs are in Indian and Asian markets. Have you ever started marketing lean labs as a service? Um, ever started we have this as a service so <laughs> this is our service um, <laughs> yeah so we we can do this uh, worldwide basically uh, we have been active not only in germany or in europe but uh, i personally have been also in laboratories in japan china india uh, in the united states in Africa, in many, many areas, I've been working in laboratories in the past year. So, yeah. Uh, that sounds really great. And uh, Christian, you're the expert worldwide. And what modules do you have um, as, as with your consultancy? Do you have modules? Do you have train the trainer programs? Do you have, yeah, what, what is in your pocket? Both what you mentioned. So, uh, We can, we can use this uh, with teams directly, so to train them, or we can train them together with an internal 
multiplicator uh, um, in a train train the train approach. Both can be um, both can be there. Uh, whenever there are multiple labs or larger labs uh, within a company, then it definitely makes sense to think about a train the trainer concept to really build the capabilities there. And that's what we could also always do. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Another question from the chat to you, Stefan. Um, Mario wrote us, Dear Stefan, lean management is a constant process of making improvements. How do you identify the most pressing areas for improvement and where do your ideas for improvement come from? Are they all developed internally or do you also include external stimulus? For example, Christian Ginu. Yeah, this is a very good question. Yes, of course, Lean is a never ending process and we are starting having a complete overview about our, com our, our complete company, our, our complete department. We had a, a special look in the, the beginning in the sample registration and we, we, we are stopping in the end when we finish the analyzation by measuring. Um, a lot of our ideas and solutions are coming from our team by ourselves. A lot of ideas were inside my employees, but nobody asking in them before, and they are not uh, in the in the uh, they they never see the possibility to place this the other ideas, and they uh, we also haven't the the opportunities to and the resources for changes but a lot of uh, experiences are coming from outside especially from christian yes of course okay th thanks a lot and perhaps a last question um to you christian um can you mesh do you measure your results when you consult companies or how, how much improvement is possible or realistic do you have some numbers for us yeah for sure we measure this and um we measure uh, or directly at the beginning when we uh, um analyze lab process we, we identify and we quantify uh, the improvement potential i mean stefan knows that that uh, yeah. that we are going through the processes quite in detail and that we really see where are the biggest improvement opportunities and uh, also quantify them that we see how much time can you save by reducing walking how much time can you re uh, reduce by uh, addressing over processing and so forth so we really go through all the different um all the different opportunities and quantify them at the beginning and then i mean we work on on developing solutions and to implement them and then after some time we also then reevaluate the same process with the same technique to see how much the improvement is and there i mean you can uh, you can see that and we've done that quite uh, quite a couple of times that you see that you really realize these uh, opportunities and that they work and uh, depending on uh, yeah how how uh, in which time frame you are doing the let's say reassessment of the impact I mean, you can do this after three or six months after you implemented uh, a majority of the uh, um, uh, of the topics. You see, uh, like from the share of um, of waste you have initially identified uh, between thirty to eighty percent on that scale. I mean, depending on really on the topics, uh, you see directly implemented and approved. So you can do a couple of things rather quickly. Some take a bit more time. But this depends really on what you see yeah, and what you identify. Sometimes there, are, there's, or typically there's a good mix of small, medium, and larger topics within each project and with, uh, process and within each lab what you can optimize. But sometimes there are also many, many small topics and sometimes more uh, few but large topics. So there's sometimes a little bit of uh, a variation depending on on the types of labs you see and also what what they improved in the past already um but um in general i mean we see in all labs we, who haven't implemented lean um in a systematic way that you can really um uh, capture a lot of benefit and we we really had no uh, no, we never had any laboratory where we haven't found any improvement any significant improvement potential below 30 40 percent we've never we really never had yeah? 
Um, and um, that's, that's, I think, good. Yeah, If you have never done it, we at least have always uh, um, with the team developed uh, these ideas. And just to build on Stefan's, uh, um, or the question to Stefan, where the ideas come from, many ideas uh, are coming from the, from, the, from the lab teams itself. Um, with the help of seeing the, the opportunities. So they, they see what has to be changed uh, and their lean is helping, but then they, we are developing ideas um, or they, are, they can develop ideas to address them on their own. And these are frequently very individual ideas uh, which they come, uh, come up with for their specific solutions. But yes, for some of uh, the ideas you can, uh, from from an external perspective, you can bring ideas, or you can also um, combine internal and external ideas. So I think it's always a good mix about um, yeah leveraging or uh, the the ideas from the team and the external ideas, which from me personally makes a lot of fun also to think about these things. And uh, Stefan, we always had at the beginning the, uh, the impression, or you said. Well, I think there's not not too much uh, in this topic here, but then at the end we came up you know, always with quite quite many good things um, um, for each of the topics. So yeah, thanks a lot, Christian, and thanks a lot, Christian. Thanks a lot, Stefan, for your impulse and your your insights. And um, if you want to boost your lab, please contact uh, Christian as an expert. I think. Uh, there's much potential in every lab. Um, so directly contact him or us. We, we will forward you the contact uh, dates. And um, yeah, I hope you learned a lot from, from this session. If you want to see again a PowerPoint slide or something, we had recorded this session, I think next or the following week, we have it on our website and on the YouTube channel. If you missed another um, lab cafe online, perhaps uh, uh, about well-being, automation labs, innovation center, we have a lot of sessions. Everything is on the website and on YouTube. You can watch that and forward that to colleagues and so on. Our next lab cafe, twenty next year in the next year, twenty twenty three, is on the eighteenth of January. It's an educational lab topic school of the future best practice around the world we have a school director from one of the most innovative schools in germany and we have school planners and psychologists from lpa design studios from the us this is an education lab topic and the next um, lab topic is on the 8th of february we talk about Roche accelerator business booster for breathtaking ideas and the brand new Roche Accelerator in Shanghai will open their doors in February and we will have a pre-look behind the concept, the architecture and a lot more with the responsible people. I'm really excited about that. So thanks a lot for joining us. Have a nice day, week and December. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.